right, let's get started. So um, I think the Russian title was uh, quite different from this one, but uh, that's how movies, movie titles tend to be translated. So uh, hopefully I won't be too far off topic. So the topic is, why is everyone and their grandmother offering platforms? And uh, it's basically uh, an overview of cloud computing in general. Um, but uh, I mean, this I already mentioned. Um, so just to lower your expectations, there won't be any code or any real technical details, um, as there was in the previous talk. And I'll be stating the obvious. So, you know, just so you don't expect too much from this. Uh, let's get going. So a little bit about me. Um, I was born in Russia, and like I said, I finished like two, three grades in Moscow. Uh, then I moved to Finland, um, where, uh, you know, I, I studied, went to high school. Then I went to study in the UK, went to university there. And I have spent... Uh, last year or so in Germany. Um, I have been working with startup companies since around 2000, so I managed to catch the last crashing waves of the last dot-com bubble, um, which was fun. Um, and I've worked with about 30 companies in total, um, and I'm very good at detecting failure in a startup early on, because most of these 30 companies have failed miserably. Um, uh, now, Alongside helping startups, uh, one of which is Axel, which is present here, um, I also do technical due diligence for investors. And Yegor mentioned one of them. It's Atomico, which is the fund started by the Skype founders. Another fund I've done work with is uh, Amadeus in the UK, which is the, f well, one of their funds um, is involved with ARM, which makes all the mobile chips, basically, or designs them, I should say. Right, let's get going. So, um, People talk about cloud computing and the diagram for a cloud is typically this rather vague um, blob with some buzzwords attached to it. Um, but actually, you can drill down into what a cloud is and what makes up a cloud. Um, sort of this breakdown was coined by Tim O'Reilly, but it's actually pretty obvious. In fact, uh, I'm proud to say I did a talk which kind of hinted at this a couple of months before he did his big blog post on, on the subject. Um, so there's three S's in the cloud, uh, and those S's are software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. So what combines all of them is the fact that, uh, you know, they're all services. Um, so you get the benefits of economies of scale. In other words, adding or servicing an extra customer uh, does not cost you much more. You don't have to set up a separate box for them. Um, you're, it's also a lot easier to maintain. This was mentioned in the previous talk. You know, you can basically roll out an upgrade without the users ever finding out about it. Um, and uh, actually, it's really good for business. So unlike Microsoft and other desktop software providers where you would charge for software in a box, uh, and you would only charge it, and you would expect most of your re revenue to generate it around launch time, which you know, made it quite unpredictable if, for whatever reason, people didn't like Vista. Uh, with services, you can charge a subscription fee, which means that your cash flow and predicting cash flow uh, is a lot easier. Um, moving on. So let's look at sort of the opposite ends of the spectrum first um, and try and get a grasp for what software as a service and what infrastructure as a service actually are. And then we'll drill into platforms, because I think that's where the exciting stuff's happening. So software. Um, with software, you sell value. You don't sell electricity. You actually sell something that's quite bespoke, specific to the problem at hand. You sell customized solutions, or you sell an, an application or a service that offers customized solutions. Um, with software, the initial investment is fairly low. Um, you can get a guy in a dorm. Uh, that starts Facebook. Um, oh, if there are any questions, I'll answer them at the end, if that's okay. Um, so, and you also have fairly high profit margins because you're close to the value creation process. Um, but potentially the risk is higher because everybody else can do the same thing. Uh, you have to be good at marketing, and it's actually, you know, a bit of a lottery, really. You have to be in the right place at the right time for your uh, software as a service offering to take off. An example of a software as a service offering that's in wide use is Gmail. Um, another popular one is Salesforce, their CRM platform, um, you know, and there's plenty of others. Looking at the bottom of the stack, we've got infrastructure. 
Um, and by infrastructure, I basically mean virtualized server instances, which is a pretty commoditized offering when you think about it, because at the end of the day, all you can compete on is the amount of bandwidth you provide, the amount of storage, and the CPU resources available uh, to that server. So you're effectively selling water, gas, or electricity. It also costs quite a lot to uh, set up your own data center. Um, so you can innovate in various ways. There's been rumors of Microsoft uh, trying to build a data center in Siberia. Um, but the next speaker can confirm or deny that or choose not to comment. But basically, it's a race to the bottom because you're fighting the elements. Electricity and energy can only get so cheap. Admittedly, Google did buy a data center somewhere and uh, you know, buy a hydroelectric plant. Anyway, uh, closer to the hardware uh, and possibly lower risk, but not everybody can do it. Moving on. Um, with infrastructure, um, again, it's a commodity. You can only differentiate in price. Uh, with software, you basically benefit from what's called a positive network effect. In other words, you're able to differentiate yourself from other vendors with the user experience and brand, and you can also tap into that user base. So you can tap into the user base um, for promotion, for getting the word out, getting more customers in. Kind of hard to do that if you're selling VPSs because only sysadmins know what you're talking about. Um, and the other thing is you can basically charge for the value created rather than from, for the sort of resource used. So the example of Dropbox is you basically get online storage, which is synced across all your computers. Um, Dropbox charged by the amount used, but actually some of the files that are stored are shared amongst the users. So essentially, if a file is shared across 100 different computers and 100 different people, they get to charge 100 times what it's actually costing them, if not more to provide that. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so there's plenty of platforms, and everybody and their grandmother is jumping to the platform space. Um, I'll look at the software as a service uh, guys that are moving there, um, and then kind of move down the stack. So probably the most famous one is Salesforce, which recently announced their force.com platform. They've also spent 250 million US on acquiring Heroku, which is a startup only a few years old, which does Ruby on Rails applications. Um, sort of towards the middle of the stack is Axel, and it uh, probably looks a bit out of place there. That's because I'm plugging it, um, because I'm helping the company out. And you should check it out. It's Axel.com. Uh, you've also got the likes of Google App Engine and Microsoft Azure, which you'll hear about in the next presentation. Moving down the stack, so those are platforms um, that offer not only virtualized server instances, but actually offer things like um, automatic scaling um, of the infrastructure with an increase in demand, as well as usually a proprietary uh, database of some sort. Um, now, moving further down the stack, uh, you've got Amazon Web Services, but those guys are moving up the stack. They're trying to provide components which do this auto scaling thing. You've got guys like Clienode and others, and um, from talking to people, I'm hearing rumors that actually hardware guys have realized that shifting physical goods may not be the best business to be in because it's quite competitive and their big customers most likely build their own hardware from cheap parts. So those guys are moving into the infrastructure space as well. And in fact, they're most likely going to try and build platforms. 